I'm going to walk through the process of deploying metadata from one Salesforce org to another using the force.com migration toolkit or ant. Now you can do the same thing using the workbench or change sets or even the force.com IDE. But if you have a deployment that takes a long time to run or that's maybe very manually intensive, you definitely want to look at ant because it's easy to script it and you can automate a lot of these tasks. So the first thing we need to do is we need to install all the requirements. So you need to, of course, have Java installed, and then we're going to install Ant. And you can download Ant from this directory, this URL right here, and extract it in any directory you'd like. And once you do that, you've got to make some changes to your environment. So, sorry, Windows users, but if you're on, if you're on a Mac, you can look at your Bash profile, and it looks something like this. You'll want to add an Ant home environmental variable and point that to the bin directory of the Apache Ant installation you just downloaded and then add that same bin directory to your path as well. So you'll, you'll want, want to do that. Okay, so after you have that all installed, we've provided you some templates to get you under, up and running quickly for deployments. So log into your Salesforce org and go to setup and search for tools. Now the tools has a link here for the force.com migration toolkit. And that's a zip file that contains a bunch of stuff to help you get started quickly. So go ahead and download that in any directory. And then we're going to go ahead and open that up. So here's mine right here. And you can see it has um, a sample directory. And it has a readme and this Ant Salesforce jar. Now that's important because if you want to run that in this directory, the build scripts references. But if you want to run Ant anywhere else for deployments outside this directory, you're going to have to add that jar to your path yourself. But uh, if you keep everything in this directory, it should work, work fine. So the samples we have have a lot of information on things you can do for deploying, um, testing, retrieving managed packages, running bulk code. A lot of stuff's in there. And a lot of stuff has names that um, don't make a lot of sense to me. To me. So um, what I typically do is I will take this code and create my own directory, my own scripts there, and make it a much user-friendly name so I can maybe tie it to a certain org or a certain project or whatever. And that's kind of what I've done for this demo here. So I've taken the information and I've grabbed some of the stuff that I want to do out of here and I've created my own directory called Ant, Ant Demo. All right, so let's take a look at that real quick, what the files are that consist on the force.com migration toolkit. Now, the first thing you need to have is the build properties, and that has the information to connect to your Salesforce org. So it has your, your username and your password and, of course, your security token, and it has a server URL. If you're connecting to a production developer edition or if it's a sandbox, you're going to enter that URL accordingly. Now, the build script is where the meat of this whole process takes place. So the build script in this case has a couple things in here. First, whenever you run the build script, it's going to actually set the ant jar file to your, your path. That way you can, it can find it. And that's what I mentioned a second ago. If you move somewhere else, you've got to make sure you have that ant file or that jar file accordingly accessible. Okay. Now we've got a couple of targets here. So I've got a, a target to retrieve metadata from my source org and save that locally. I've got a target to actually deploy that same code, that same metadata to a different Salesforce org. And then I've got a target to actually remove that metadata from that second org altogether. And we'll kind of walk through those at the same time. All right. So let's go ahead and look first at uh, what's going on in this file here. So in this retrieve target, what it's going to do is actually going to use information in this directory and this package XML file. It's going to download all the metadata specified in that package XML file, and it's going to actually save it into a directory called receive source, retrieve source. Now, again, this can be called anything you want. Like a lot of times I will do it by project. I'll do it by username, which is tied to the org. Any way you want, you're not tied to these names whatsoever. So let's look at this retrieve folder. So the retrieve folder has this package XML, and it's actually specifying what we're going to be pulling down from our target org. So what it says here is we're going to actually have the account object. We're going to grab just this my field. It's a custom field. We're going to grab all the metadata about this custom object called my custom object. And we're going to grab all the Apex classes there. And then we're going to be get, also grab a Visual Force page called my page. Now, one thing I want to mention is that you'll notice this is called my page for a Visual Force page because the metadata types are, are a little different than what you're used to. So in the metadata API um, documentation, you'll see 
on this page right here, it, it lists the different metadata types that are accessible via the metadata API. So you want to scroll in here and take a look at these and see which, what's available. You'll notice this is the Apex class, but Visual Force components are called Apex components and Visual Force pages are called Apex pages and so on and so on. So you make sure if you're hand coding those, somehow that you're going to make sure you grab the right ones for the right types of metadata you want to grab and bring down. All right, so let's jump back over here again. So now we've got, of course, we've got our package XML, which defines what we're going to pull down. And we've got, again, our, our build script. So let's go ahead and run this retrieve target and pull down all of our, our metadata from this source org, okay? So what I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and look at, at, at this information that we have in this build script. So you can also run ant. This is just kind of let you know what's in this build script to make sure everything's running correctly. So these are all our, our targets. And now I'm going to run the ant retrieve target. And you'll notice up here that you'll see a folder pop up and it'll start popping that folder with metadata that it downloads. All right, you see that our, our folders there popped up. It's actually saving all the metadata in the local directory here. All right, there you go. So everything's successful. We've got our files here. Let's take a look at this. Here is the metadata that downloaded. And if we look at this package XML again, you'll see we have an account field. So if I look at this object, you'll see here's the account object that it downloaded. Let me jump into that real quick and you'll see that it just downloaded the my field, custom field. We also specify we wanted to bring down this my custom object object. So here is that with all the metadata to find about that. We're also grabbing all the Apex classes. So here's all our classes. You get the test controller with and then test my test the test of my controller. Look at that. And then finally we've got the Apex page. So here's our Apex page. So that, that's a fairly simple way to do it to actually download the code. You just specify what you want in the in the package.xml run the target and it'll download all that data to you. So the next thing we want to do is now we want to take that same metadata and of course deploy it to another org. So if this is a sandbox, you want to deploy to production. So we're going to run through that process of doing that. It's a little bit different when you deploy um, when you deploy to, to an org, the the actual metadata API has a number of different ways you can you can actually deploy code. So typically you deploy code, run all the tests, or you can run a subset of tests, or you can run a validation that you just ran and deploy that way to speed things up. I'm going to run the easiest way here to show you that, but definitely want to check out this part here, deploying change to a Salesforce org, the different ways that you can deploy things if you want to run all tests or make things faster or whatever you want to do. So let's go ahead first and jump into this target org and see what we got to do here. So here's the target org. You can see this one's incognito. This is actually this is actually the target org that I use for um, for the deployment. So I just pulled the metadata down from this one right here. You'll see here's all the Apex classes. So that's my my source org. That's the one I'm pulling down the metadata source from. And now I have my target org. So if I look at this, you'll see that if I look at the account object, the field, there is no field called my field. We don't have a custom object in here at all. There's no custom objects. And then also for the Apex classes, we've got no Apex classes and no Visual Force pages. All right, so there's that. And then Visual Force pages, just make a check real quick. All right, so there we go. So not, nothing's there. So now we want to deploy this all to our Salesforce org. So if I jump back over here and look at this, so close that if I look at the build script again so now we're going to do a deploy so what's going to do is going to take all the files that are in this retrieve source that we just downloaded and it's going to deploy this to our target org so one thing I need to do is now I need to actually change the the username password of my target org so instead of being my source org I'm going to change it to my target org so I'm going to go ahead and pause this and change that real quick here All right, so there's my new credential. See, it's now it's dot target. That's what we're going to be deploying to. So now, if I go back here and I look at my build XML again, we're going to take everything in this retrieve source folder that we just downloaded, and we're going to deploy that to our new target org. All right. 
So now we'll do All right, so our deployment completed successfully. Let's take a look and see how that looks. So here's our target org again. We're in our incognito mode. So now if I look at this account object, you'll see we have the my field custom field. And we also have a custom object here called my custom object. There it is there. And then we have a couple custom cl apex classes here we have the my controller and test my controller apex classes and last we had the visual force page so now we have all our components that we deployed from the, the source org to the target org that worked out really well really easy to run that from the command line so what happens if you want to back things out or delete things out for some reason so you can also one of the projects you can do is you can delete metadata from an org also and that process is just slightly different and we'll kind of walk through that real quick also so to delete data or to remove or undeploy this, it's a little bit different. So we have a, a target here called remove, and it's gonna use this deploy root, this folder, this directory called remove. And it's a slightly different. So with the remove, you have to use two files. One's a package file, and it's just a, a standard boilerplate that lists the package deployment. But this is the most important one. This is called, it actually has to be named destructive change.xml. It's very important, it has to be called that. And that will tell Ant, what's going to undeploy or, de or remove from your org. So we're saying we want to undeploy this field. We want to undeploy this custom object. And you have to actually specify the Apex classes that you want to undeploy or remove. You can't use a wild card in this point. And then the Visual Force page you want you want to remove. So same process. We're going to actually, in our, in our build script, we're going to say, go ahead and remove all these files and use the package.xml and the destructive change.xml specified in this directory and remove all those components in our target org. So let's go ahead and run that real quick. All right, there we go. Finish successfully, deployment succeeded. And now we can go back here and look at our target org again. And this page should be gone. So our page is gone and our Apex classes are gone. There's our Apex classes, and if we look at our account object right here, you'll see that there is a field that was deleted. And we can see there's that field there, and then of course we also have the custom object that we deleted. So there you go. So there's a quick overview on how to use the metadata API to migrate metadata from one org to another deploy it, download it, even delete it. But there's tons of things you can do with the Metadata API, so make sure you check out the documentation.